All right guys, so after years and years of soldering and desoldering, I've been wanting to get one of these little rework stations. It's a lot easier to remove a lot of components on printed circuit boards with heat as opposed to just a soldering iron. Had some pretty good reviews, so I figure, you know what, for $89, um, why not give it a shot? So, let's see what comes in the box. Of course, you're going to get the little user manual. Let's see. <laughs> comes with a solder pump, some tweezers comes with a little bit of desoldering wick which is kind of cool um, it's nice to have all these little extra pieces this is the mount for the soldering iron that's to clean up the tip for the soldering iron comes with two tips for the heat gun okay soldering iron and it comes with one, two, three, four, five, six different tips. Some leaded solder, which is nice to have because you put that on your uh, components on the board and the leaded solder actually melts a lot easier than the solder that they use on the circuit boards. This is the reason why I went with this specific um, model this actually has a air pump on the inside as opposed to some that are about twenty dollars less that have a little fan inside about the hot end here so this is going to give you more of a constant airflow as opposed to a little fan inside the handle spinning um, so you're going to get a lot more um, consistent heat coming off of this okay so there's two screws on the bottom we have to remove so you can see here in the front you have your rework um, section and your soldering section of course the rework is for the heat gun here and then the soldering of course for the soldering iron all right so we're going to turn this on there's a little power switch here in the back so we're going to focus on the rework station right now Right now you see three little dots. First thing we need to do is we need to decide if we want it in Celsius or Fahrenheit. I want it in Celsius, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this little switch on and hold this button down. And it's already set to Celsius. If I wanted to, I would turn it and then it would switch it to Fahrenheit. So right now what it's doing is it's going to lower itself down to 100 degrees celsius when i pull the heat gun out it will allow me to turn the temperature up so pull out the heat gun you can already see that it's starting to rise on its own and i already have it set up here i want it at 350 degrees celsius but let's say i didn't want it there and I wanted it to be at 300. I would take the little knob here, I would turn it down to 300, and then you'll see it switch to EP, and that basically means that it's saved in the system here. Now, I need to set this up for airflow. Now to do that, I'm just gonna hold it down. You'll see an F come up, and then it goes from zero to 16. So I'm gonna hold this, and it's already at 16, but I can turn it down all the way to one. The only other thing that this has is the temperature compensation. So what that temperature compensation is, when you're using the heat gun on the board, the board is absorbing some of that heat, so you're not gonna get the full amount of heat coming off of this little guy here. So the heat compensation basically makes up for that 
and you can set that all the way to 80 degrees Celsius all the way down to negative 80 degrees Celsius so if you hold this down have 80 it'll go all the way down to negative 80 so I think this thing was defaulted at 80 so I'm just going to keep it there you'll be able to see with the solder here when I take the heat tip starts to melt pretty easily. One of the features that this has is when I put this heat uh, gun back into the cradle, it kind of has a sleep mode. So you can see the heat starts to go back down on its own and then it'll basically go all the way back down to 100 degrees Celsius. There you go. And then pretty much the pump turns off. Okay, so for the soldering iron, we want to set that up pretty much the same way as we did with the rework station. I want to set it up for Celsius, so I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to hold this switch down, and you'll see the little C or the F for Fahrenheit or for Celsius. So I have it on Celsius now. If I wanted to switch it to Fahrenheit, I would. I'm going to keep it up on Celsius and then you will see that it's going to save it. Boom. So there's that. So I have it set to 350. Perfect. And if I hold this down, same with the rework station, it has the temperature compensation. And this one actually goes from negative 90 degrees Celsius to positive 90 degrees Celsius. So if I was to hold this down, you'll see it there, and that's the 90, and I can go all the way down to negative 90. Soldering iron here, and you can see it already heated it up. So getting these off with just a regular soldering iron is very, very hard to do. Be a little too rough with it or not heat it up enough, and then you'll tear all the contacts off the board because I won't have to use a soldering iron tip to heat up the board, heat up the, the solder. I can just use that heat and then it'll just pull it right out. So that's what I wanted it for and it'll help me remove a lot of these smaller SMD components. What I need to do is I need to reinstall a HDMI port on another board. Alright guys, so this is going to be my first attempt at using one of these, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of flux here, like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the ends here try and get these back on to the other board these two little spots right here this is what I'm going to try to resolder these guys onto all right guys so I got those two little components back on the board here and I kind of used both methods um, to get them back on there so I used the soldering iron and I also used the heat gun. So I used the soldering iron to kind of tack one side down and then I tacked the other side down. And then afterwards I used the heat gun to kind of go over the top of both of them just so that the solder would melt 
um, and just kind of you know give it a, a little bit better of a um, connection to the board I definitely had to you know tinker around with the heat gun just to find the right technique to get these little components off the board but I figure the more that I use it the better it's gonna get but that doesn't look too bad man for my first try this is the HDMI port that I need to replace uh, if you look at the port to even see inside there it's pretty beat up so we just need to remove this HDMI port and you can see like this is the reason why it's so hard to remove these ports you see these little tiny pins back here and you know you only got real one shot to do it or you're gonna destroy that board and tear the contacts off the board so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some flux along these pins up here I'm gonna put some flux here on the contacts on the the grounds here I'm gonna flip the board over put some flux on that as well There, real real careful with where we're putting the heat in fact I might even use a little bit of tape to cover up some of these components here because these little guys these are tiny tiny so I might just do that just so that it'll kind of save these components I don't want them to come off the board so I'm gonna take the heat gun put it underneath the board like this and then I'm just gonna let it sit there and heat it up and then I'll use a pair of pliers to kind of pull that up I have this machine set up to 450 degrees Celsius um, as you can see I don't have um, a tip on this anymore because I want that heat to be distributed a little bit better than just on one little small area then I'm pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to move it down here on the bottom like this and then I'm just going to wait for it to liquefy and then I will try to wiggle it up. Perfect, just like that. Okay, so that came off nice and clean. Look at that. All the contacts are still there. Everything's good. And then you can see on the back here, that tape was starting to melt a little bit, but that's the reason why I put that over at the top of this, because it was hitting all these components here. So now what I need to do is I need to clean all this solder off. So I switched up the tip on the soldering iron to the flat tip again. And then what I'm going to do is put some more flux on the board. Use our desoldering wick. Okay, and then we take a little bit more flux and we make sure that none of this is bridging. Alright, so here is the new HDMI port. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this down like that. I need to make sure that this solder melts perfectly on these contacts again so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to solder in these grounds oh 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the heat gun again and I put the small tip on there and then I'm just going to run some heat right across these pins on top and hopefully that's enough to get these pins to um, reconnect to the board here. I think that's it. The best way to test that is I have to go by each individual pin and then what I do is I push on the pin to see if it's a solid connection and if it is then we're set heck yeah clean clean it's done and I'm super pumped about it so hopefully this video helps you guys out peace for now